Here's what they get. There's rarely ever a franchise quarterback in his prime who's available. The answer is a ton. They had several teams offer first round picks or similar value packages on the table, including, uh, of course, the Los Angeles Rams. They had a really strong offer on the table. What ended up being two future first round picks and a third rounder this year. And Jared Goff, by the way, and the Jared Goff piece of this thing is key because, of course, he's considered a little bit of a throw in here just based on how terrible his contract was, how many uh, guaranteed millions he had. But the Lions wanted Goff. It's not like they just took him on to dump him like the Brock Osweiler deal. They wanted him. So in the end, here's what you got. You got a whole bunch of teams who were involved in this are now still searching for a franchise quarterback. You have the Los Angeles Rams, who now think they have a rock star at quarterback. So Sean McVay can work with the Matthew Stafford. And you have the Detroit Lions with a bridge quarterback this year and a ton of first round picks and capital going forward. A blockbuster trade to shake up a Saturday night. Yeah, Ian, great stuff on that. I'm going to empty some of the notebook, too. You've got a lot of the color. I know we both were on text throughout the weekend about this thing. Let's get into some more of this. The teams that actually inquired about Stafford besides just the Rams. Let's go here. Denver offered a very handsome package. Carolina offered a very good package. And you look at Carolina, they've got a top 10 pick. I will say that from what I hear, a top 10 pick was included in the package that they offered to the Lions. Indianapolis, Washington, and other teams as well, those will trickle out throughout the week. The Lions, they were listening and they welcomed Stafford's input. They did not want to end this like they ended it with Calvin Johnson, where it's on an ugly note and Calvin Johnson has nothing to do with the Lions anymore. They wanted to end things with their quarterback of 11 years on a good note. Let's bring up that screen again because there's more to unload here and I want to get to all of it. So you have that two aspects of it, okay? The third part of it, which is mentioned, Ian hit it perfectly. Everyone's saying, what do you mean? Carolina offered a top 10 pick and you took this deal instead? The Lions like golf. The Lions wanted golf. Brad Holmes, who's working for the Lions, was number two at the Rams for many years in their front office. He's the new GM of the Lions. He wanted golf as a part of it. So they view golf as a starting quarterback. They better because for two more years, they're paying golf a lot more money than they would have if they had just gotten a draft pick. And the last one, which is interesting, Sam Farmer noted it yesterday on the NFL Network, but it's been true. Rams, they're like, let's cover, uncover every stone before we agree to trade this guy, trade with us. They said, okay, if Stafford's on the block, we're gonna talk to Stafford. But what about Rodgers? That comment that he made last week, where after the game and he said, you know, we don't know about the futures, they're unknown. The Rams did their due diligence. They called the Packers and said, can we trade for Aaron Rodgers? And the Packers, they said no. The significant parts here are that all parties are happy. The Rams are happy with the deal. The Lions are thrilled with the deal. From what I'm told, Stafford's thrilled with it. And now Goff apparently is happy to be in Detroit. One last note, McVay doing all of this stuff, wheeling and dealing from a resort in Cabo the entire week. So here we are, Cabo, Stafford, the Rams. Let's go. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and one of my favorite Spanish words is perfectly used to sum up what's going on here. Agresivo, Peter Schrager. Aggressive as always. This Ram squad with McVeigh uh, and Les Snead at the helm. Let's take a quick peek. We've got our NFL uh, artists to give us a sneak peek of what Matthew Stafford will look like in Rams colors. I love it. Nate, do you love it? I do. I do. And shout out to McVeigh. He went to Cabo. Um, I love this because mm-hmm. everybody wins. Like Ian saying, like Peter is saying, you know, you have the Detroit Lions who are stacking up. And what do we say with the draft picks? They're like gold. So moving forward, if they do this right, they'll be able to load up for the future. So the Lions are in good hands. On the flip side, I said this last week, wherever Stafford goes, if he lands in a good offense, a good system with good supporting cast around him, he'll be a top five quarterback in this league. I'll say it again, just so we're clear. Don't be surprised at the end of this season when we look at Matt Stafford, he is a top five quarterback in this league. His ability to get get the ball to all of his playmakers on time with a system like Sean McVay is running, this is the perfect place for Matt Stafford to end his career. Uh, sorry, guys. I was just a uh, little. I was on Veronica's Instagram checking out how the McVeighs are doing. They're doing great. Um, here's my thing, uh, Nate. You couldn't have led me any perfectly. Never mind uh, the Chiefs or Bucks winning the Super Bowl next year. For some reason, between Saturday night and now, everyone just decided the Rams are going to win the Super Bowl next year. 
There's an incredible, powerful army behind Matthew Stafford, and Nate, I think, is one of the foot soldiers in it who are like, he's the best quarterback ever. They're going to win everything. He's been, he, the only reason is because of the Detroit Lions. We better hope so. There are no more excuses now. I've sat here for over a decade and heard how incredible Matthew Stafford is and what a winner he is and all. He never won squat. He's never won a playoff game. And you know what, guys? He's mm -hmm. been to three of them. He lost all three. He didn't exactly light it up. He lost one of them to Tony Romo, who never won playoff games. So, like, I don't want to trash Matt Stafford this morning. I just, like, pray for the Stafford army if this team doesn't go 19-0 next year, as they're predicting it's going to be. Let's just wait and see. We don't. I, I go back to the Carmelo Anthony comparison. I think it's dead on. Matthew Stafford feels like the Carmelo of the NFL, an unbelievably talented, respected guy who doesn't win the big games. He's got a great shot and all those excuses, Detroit, change GM, change coach, they're all gone. Matt Stafford, go and win now because he's been waiting for over a decade for you to do this. There's no excuses, they're gone, let's go. When this trade happened, Kyle, uh, and we'll Expected. dig into this throughout the Expected. show, I just thought about draft picks, and you've talked about, I'd rather have the, the known player, the known commodity, than the draft pick. It is crazy to me that the Rams have not made a first-round pick since McVay took that job, and as of right now, doing the math, it's not slated to happen until at least 2023, eight years into his gig there, his eighth year as head coach. So they've pulled it off so far. I don't know how they're going to end up paying all these guys, because that's obviously the benefit of taking a guy in the first round, but it definitely shows how they view a first round pick and I wonder if it change how changes how first round picks are viewed in the future if it does work out okay let's get to a break we've got lots on the show uh, T.O. is joining our program DeAndre Swift we've got um, a fun little surprise for someone down in Tampa I'll say that much little Brady trivia on the way we are getting the party started here Super Bowl 55 shoot the cannons baby We've got a fan experience, by the way, to tell you guys about uh, from seven camera angles. You can go all over to the cannons, to the field. It's Verizon 5G Super Stadium. It's on the NFL app. It's available to iPhone 12.